my name is Kay Regentine. Uh, we live on Pac uh, we live in Pacolet, and we live on Fuller Street. Recently, we just moved about 16 months ago from Ohio, and I want to speak to you about first impressions. Um, I have been disappointed in. Well, just jump in the car with me. Let's go for a ride. We're going to come from from Spartanburg, and we're going to turn left onto. Um, West Main Street. There is trash there that you would not believe. I'm embarrassed. We have uh, company and family coming uh, this time, sometime in March, and I'd like to tell them to just fly into my front yard. I, I'm very disappointed. Uh, I've not seen any action done in the 16 months that we've been here. We moved here because my daughter lives here, and my son-in-law, who is a pastor of one of the churches here. But anyway, you come all the way down. After you turn left onto um, uh, West Main Street, you go all the way down to the way we go home, is you would turn left uh, on Memorial. And there's trash there also. But there are houses there that looks like they open the door and throw their daily trash out. And this really bothers me. We bought a new home here, the smallest home we've ever bought, the most expensive home we've ever bought. Not because of your area, but that's just the way that it is. Um, I, I feel like that our house is going to be, um, oh, yeah, depreciated and uh, because of the area. Anyway, you come down 150th and you turn right onto Fuller and you turn into our driveway and what you see between the two houses there, the house behind us has a trampoline that is broken and it's pushing against the fence, knocking the fence down. Not our fence, we didn't put it up, but it's what we see. That's what we see from our backyard. There's a barking dog there that barks. Uh, 24-7, I'm not here about the dog, other than to say, I feel sorry for the dog, I don't know if it's being taken care of. Actually, there's two dogs there, and but the trash in the backyard, I, I am concerned about. Uh, and I really do feel that our, our home can would be uh, depreciated if we were to try to sell it right now, because first impression, first impressions stick. And when you pull into West Main Street, or onto West Main Street, and you see all that trash, it's not just a, a soda can here and there and a piece of paper. I mean, it actually looks like somebody just dumped their bag of trash there without the bag. And so today I came up um, the next exit, where it has the nice packet sign. Is that? Um, is that? How old is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. It didn't seem to be that bad. There was a little bit here and there, but nothing that bad. Um, so I would like to. Uh, I like the people here. I have no problems with that. I love our church, the people there. I'm just. Um, I just feel like that we will be if it continues. We will be known as the town uh, that you know don't does not take care of their things. It's um, just a, a trashy part of the town. A little pun here on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> so um, that's what I'm here about. And um, I think that's all I have to say. I'll leave you with first impressions because that's what I started with. And that's how I feel people look at us when they pull in, seeing our community. We want our community to look nice. I do. And um, I just, I don't know, is there somebody that does this? Is there somebody not doing their job? It's worse than it was 16 months ago. So I don't know if you're allowed to answer my question. Well, we'll, we'll look into it and yeah, we'll get back and we'll get you, we'll get you uh, an answer back to you. Okay. Well, I would like it taken care of. We've always lived in a, a nice city, right. uh, big cities. Uh, we lived in Akron and Cleveland and uh, Tampa and Baltimore, and we've never experienced this kind of thing in our neighborhood. So.
Okay. I'm just disappointed. Um, thank, thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Brother. Not here, Ray Keller and Coles. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, Brian Bozard, uh, the 474 McDowell Street, and I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of tag on to uh, to what the lady just came up here and said. We have Michael Berry. He's going around giving tickets to people that have a trash yard. Um, we, as a town, we don't have any place for people to go and take trash that don't have the means of doing it. So I'm making a suggestion to the town. Maybe we can have a couple dumpsters over here at the old cloth room on the first Saturday of every month. Open it up to the, to the town in the surrounding areas. Hey, if you want to come bring rubber, metal, wood, stuff that's in your yard that you want to get rid of, an old trampoline, here's a place to do it. We're going to do it on the first of every the first weekend of every month. They can't cost that much for to get three dumpsters to have a company come and take them to uh, take them to a landfill. The only problem is we'd have to have somebody there to monitor what they put in. Um, I agree. The trash along West Main Street, um, and I'll hit on it. It's not in the town, so we really don't have uh, the means to go and send people out there and pick it up. I think uh, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Thomas Williams has has had a group go out and do pickup. I appreciate that. Um, I think I think it looked a little bit better from what I heard. Somebody said it looked like some trash being picked up. Um, that's enough on the trash. The dumpsters, I think, would be a great idea. Uh, the next thing, uh, a town street uh, between 176 is called Deerwood. Deerwood runs into Hillbrook. Hillbrook runs into uh, to Pine Street, it's where the fire station is. The speed limit on that road is 35 miles an hour. You go to 150, Highway 150, it is not a town road. The speed limit is 25. I would think that Deerwood and Hillbrook would be more of a residential street. I'm asking the town to look into putting that street as 25 miles an hour. I also have a problem with, if you're on 176 coming from Spartanburg, there are signs for Packlet Business District. Packlet Fire Department, Packlet Police Department. I think those signs need to be removed because those road, that road is being used as a thoroughfare for big trucks, Dollar General, gas trucks, and other trucks that are making deliveries to IGA, to Dollar General. It's a residential street. I think that we need to, as a town, we need to slow that stuff down and sit in front of the fire station. As I pull out my fire truck, I gotta look both ways three times just to make sure there's not a big truck coming. Um, those are two things. Um, last thing, um, it goes to, I looked at the board, we're having a planning, a planning commission meeting to discuss changing, changing the uh, zoning of a few properties. Um, I would make a suggestion that before the zoning commission makes any changes to any of the variances in any of how the, the buildings and are being used, I think the town needs to do is Mr. Patrick K has stated, we need to do a master plan. So before we go changing how businesses are being used, I think the master plan needs to be done so that we're not making changes before the master plan is done and saying, hey, we don't think that you should be putting a car lot here and a car lot here because this is a residential area. I think the master plan would come in and say, this is a residential area. I think that we need to keep it residential. Let's put the businesses over here. Let's put the car dealerships over here. Um, and um, that's basically it. I have 30 seconds left. What? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not here. Um, I, I would like to make um, one comment. The HVAC system that was installed here at the town, it was put on bid. We didn't go with the lowest bidder. We didn't go with the lowest bidder because that person lived in the town. Unfortunately, the person that we gave the job to does not live in town. They live in Central Pack. So all that money that we gave to that company to be here in the town, they don't even pay town taxes. None of that revenue is gonna go back to the town. 
in their taxes for that business because their business is not even in the town. So that's all I have. Um, and uh, if y'all would just uh, send any replies or responses back to my comments. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes that we did not have 
in front of us with the corrections that we made. They were not in the packet, and we did not actually have those with us. So you want the figures to match? Yeah, the figures need to be matched what was spoken um, at the council meeting. And if you'd like, I, I, I would not mind showing you exactly what was said. No, I know, I know what was said. Multiple times. And then, and then, if you'll notice, at one point in time, I actually, actually specifically asked, does this include the police department? And yes, in fact, it includes the police department. Which would be the difference in the 79,806 as opposed to the 80, whatever, uh, I think we had 85, 8.0. So the, the, the figures just didn't simply match because they either weren't added up right or they were perceived to be too Did you know the answer, answer to that when you asked the question? Or were you genuinely not sure? I, I asked the question because what was told to me was this is the quote. <laughs> this is this is the figure and this you is the accepted number. that answer knowing it was wrong? Or you didn't I didn't accept the single thing. What I accepted was what was told to me. This is the meeting minutes. This is what was said to the public. This is what the public is going to understand what they're we're going to use our money. Was that by design it. that you didn't correct it? I'm sorry? Was it by design that you didn't correct it? Why would I need to correct it? What? Three months straight, the same numbers were given. So you knew they were wrong and you didn't bring it up? How would I know it was wrong? Well, no, that's said, what I'm asking. I'm what just was asking said, if you knew that. What was or said or is, that? is what, was, what was there. That's what we all agreed on. I'm asking if you were asking a hypothetical, like a, a question to get him to say the wrong thing when you knew the answer. I don't know, I'm asking him. So Why would I do such a thing? I have no idea. That's, that's, a, well, that's a very heinous. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sweet patient. Okay. It's a strong word. Yeah. Okay, the, uh, you were making a motion to uh, correct those. What do you say? No, sir. Motion made and second. Okay. We have any more discussion that we know of here. We know that these be changed to the what is, is what is, just one more thing. What is the rule? Is it we kind of already there? went past the discussion point. Should I call the question? Go for it. Are you making a motion? Yeah, we, a motion. We, we already have a motion. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? All opposed? You, you vote? I'm sitting here trying to pick this in. Because <laughs> my thing, this is, no, I didn't vote. I didn't. I may have a show of hands of who did vote, because it's. Me, me. Teresa and Daniel and Ned voted for it. Josephine and April neglected the vote. Thomas voted against it. It might be prudent to do a roll call. Yes, Okay. Um, Executive session uh, regarding negotiation of personnel. Motion made to say, all the way.
Okay. Is there any firm contract uh, on the master plan, the final master plan? I think it was something to approve the benchmark to the master plan. Okay. Second. So you made the second that I said benchmark is the uh, master plan you know, for the master plan. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed. You consider the first reading and uh, amendment purchasing policy. Uh, Mayor, the uh, reason. I guess we could do a discussion after. Yeah, we need to have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the amended purchasing policy. I thought we were going to put a committee together. That's, that's what I understood too at the time. That's further down in your business. Mm. And while we're just doing this, we have a first and second motion left. Mm -hmm. So we uh, ask them for discussion. No, uh, first is uh, we have a, we have a motion to accept. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion made second to uh, accept the first reading and amendment to the purchase of the policy. Now we'll have a discussion. Uh, the reason this is necessary, uh, we went through. Our purchasing policies, there's vague in some areas and it's run, we've run into some very recent issues. Um, so they've been updated, we've taken into consideration some of uh, Mr. Wright's suggestions. Um, the sticking point will probably be that we've taken out the penalty section. There is a penalty section already in our ordinances um, that may need to be updated. Who is we on this ordinance? You said we. Who is we? Oh, sorry. It's it's been. It's him and Patrick. This is this is Patrick's original purchasing policy that he tried to submit two months ago, and and. And the email that I sent Patrick with the search of corrections, Thomas made those corrections to this policy and then submitted it for the council to approve. So essentially, our purchasing agent has reoffered his view on what governs his purchasing ability. Is it his or is it, is it uh, uh, where did he get that? Do you know where you got it? Yes, this actually came from the Municipal Association of South Carolina's website and some back files that has recently been removed from their website, it's no longer able to be found. This is in fact uh, used in only one town back in, uh, or county, I'm sorry, it's in Sumter County, this is new. The entire county of Sumter uses this as a procurement policy, not an ordinance. This is a policy, not to be used as an ordinance by law or anything of that sort. It's simply a policy that's adopted by the procurement department of the county. Um, this, this should not be used as a municipal ordinance, period. This is, this is a policy, and it, it actually says policy. And, and on, our, on our, our, our thing, it says purchasing policy. So if we're going to, if we're going to do a first reading on amending the purchasing policy, I'm, I'm all for that, except we don't already have the purchasing policy. We have laws. Well, I, we think have that's a, I think that's semantics. I mean, we, it's also- What do you mean semantics? We, we in fact, use ordinances, not policies here. Okay. The, the administrator uses policies to govern the subordinates of his own. We use right. ordinances to govern Right, his own. we're updating uh, an ordinance here. It's not what it says. It actually says that we're amend amendment to the purchasing policy. Right. That's what it says on the agenda. Right. That so may, we're updating that, an ordinance now? That may be, yes, we are. So that may you, be semantic. Would you like to amend the agenda? What's that? Would you like to amend the agenda? Well, no, I don't know if there. Take this motion to start with. Can, 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 can I uh, speak? Yes. I call the question. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor of the coming order. Do you vote on this? You're, you're putting the question? 
The call to question it. means that discussion stops. And, he, and we, we vote if we want to uh, uh, accept his call for the question. We're going to vote for it. We're going to vote for that call for question. All in favor? All opposed? Either way, it's his order. Okay. 
How do, how do we even create this committee? Who's gonna be on the committee? Well, yeah, how big is the committee? <laughs> Three, three people, and you, you can't, uh, you, you know, you don't have to be available. I mean, you know, you can't, you know, say I'm not available or whatever, you know. We need to make rules first on how to <coughs> be nominated and then how to vote. $14.64 a month, uh, and to make sure they recoup their cost of there, they have set it up as a, I believe it's a three-year contract. Of course, we'll continue to, 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 it'll just be added to everything on there, but they do ask us this, we initially create that three-year contract, which would be 527.04 available in monthly payments. Motion to approve three laps on the new group. Motion made and second. We need discussion. All in favor? All opposed? You have the HGBAC and left the lead down. Yes, I've sent you all uh, everything that I have on this and what I am recommending or would like to do at this point is to do a design build on uh, electrical needs to be able to read it. Um, recommending either that we have an RFQ or RFP for an electrical engineer to provide stamp drawings for licensed electrical contractor to then submit sealed bids 
or to do, um, it's up to either one, it's, it's to, to do a design build to provide adequate power for the outside HVAC units. Uh, in August of last year, the HVAC units began to fail, and I asked General Mayor to come and give an evaluation of the units, uh, if they could be repaired and what they recommended. It was noted that the units were approximately 30 years old and that parts uh, for them were not available. The units at the time were also determined by General Mayor to be undersized for the size of the space. Uh, I sent an email to Council on September 7, uh, 2022. Uh, informing everyone of this estimated cost of the replacements, the units, uh, both here and the uh, police department, based on information received from General Mayor. I included the email that due to the cost, it would need to be completely bid publicly. Um, in the next sentence, I stated that you have the authority in Article 6, Section 2-143 to declare the project of emergency that affect the public welfare or the health or safety of the public or town employees and that would really waive the requirement. I recommended the council to find to then find three separate companies to bid the project and let council select the lowest bid which would save the time uh, of competitive bidding. Uh, my last comment in that email was what are your thoughts? Uh, Mr. Wright responded that he needed an evaluation of the existing units which I sent to him that he agreed that three bids was essential and that at the next council meeting we could review and decide the necessary process moving forward. He also noted that it may be feasible and less costly to install a completely new system that serves the building with less HVAC units. I received another email from Ms. Palmer Green agreeing that this would be considered an emergency situation and if the rest of the council agrees she doesn't have a problem moving forward. On September 8th, 2022, I sent an update to council and included a section that stated in regard to town hall HVAC updates. I had a recommendation from council person to uh, um, redesign a new system that could use less units and would be more efficient overall. I added that I will have three quotes for you to review next Thursday on this new proposed direction. I reached out to three companies to receive quotes, General Air, Priority Heating, and Air, and CWG. When I spoke with each of them, I stated that the system needed to reduce the number of units when the quotes came in. Priority did not reduce the uh, number of units, so I sent them an email to ask why. They stated that they were, they were unable to get the commercial equipment it would need to reduce the number of units. The packet for the October 6th Council was sent out which included all of these quotes, and I made the recommendation to proceed with CWG, which was the lowest quote, um, which was the lowest quote, which reduced the number of units as per directed. Uh, there was concern on how to, how to pay for work, and under the ARCO guidelines had changed, and this was an approved expense. The minutes reflect that Mr. Wright asked that it be tabled. It was added to the November 3rd council meeting agenda, and council proceed approved to proceed with an award to CWG Heating and Air for the price of $85,829. It has been suggested that the minutes were altered. However, these minutes were presented at the December 1st, the December 1st council meeting and council member Wright motion to accept the minutes from the October 6, 2002 meeting as written. Council member uh, Sexton, Sex, uh, council member Sexton seconded the motion. The motion was carried unanimously. I had regularly been receiving calls from CDBG stating the price was going to rise in November, so the units were ordered the following day after approval. I did not create a contract for work to be done. CWG was willing to do all the work up front and not receive payment until completed. Uh, the units arrived on approximately November 14th, and CWG began installation shortly after the project was completed as far as I knew in the last week of November. 
the heat was on in the building and the thermostat, thermostat worked, but I hadn't thought to check to see if the outside units were wired up. After speaking to CW, with CWG, the electric, electrical portion of the above pricing only included reconnecting the HVAC units to the existing disconnect. Due to the disconnect not being installed or undersized, CWG could not uh, energize the units. The electrical portion and work was not within their scope of work. CWG stated uh, that the units were much larger and therefore required much more power than the previous units. The replacement unit at the police station was the same size as the previous unit, so CWG was able to easily reconnect the electrical there. I then asked the electrician to give me an idea of the cost of what all involved I was involved to energize the units. Uh, that's when I discovered that the exterior panel for the HVAC units was only a 100 amp service and the new HVAC units potentially needed at least 200 amp three-phase power for the new 10-ton unit. CWG then requested payment for the purchase, delivered and installed HVAC units. Therefore, I went ahead and paid CWG 90% of the cost of work after the units were connected to uh, sorry. I went ahead and paid CWG's 90% of the cost for the work and after the units were connected to the disconnect and operational, the 10% re retainage would be released. Uh, I reached out to several electricians to try to get a price and understand what all needs to be done for the units to be energized. One electrician stated that the building did not have three-phase power and that it would need to be upgraded. Another electrician also stated that the service to the building would need to be increased along with a new panel in the basement. The panel in the basement is very old with two 150 amp inline fuses uh, next to a 200 amp panel. One price came in at approximately $45,000, which would trigger full uh, contract procedures. This is when I sent you an email in on uh, February 7th, updating, updating you on the situation. I stated the situation as I knew at the time and asked for suggestions and alternatives. I also stated that the project would be bid out. On February 9th, I drafted an RIP to receive bids on the upgrade of electrical based on comments from both electricians. The following week, on the 15th, I spoke with our representative with RCI, who stated that we would need a licensed electrician to proceed with the electrical needs as this would not be covered under CWG's mechanical license. He also stated that it if we were bringing in new service to the building and altering or replacing the existing panel, the code requires additional work and effort to bring the existing electrical within the building to current standards. He suggested having a separate service just for the HVAC units instead of replacing the existing electrical in town hall. He stated that all of this would still need to be designed by an engineer. I sent an updated email to the council of this date, February 15th, and withdrew the RFP. I also reached out to Lockhart Power to get feedback from them. February 16th, Lockhart came by and stated that Town Hall does, does have three-phase power going into the building. However, I have been unable to find the panel inside with a three-phase service. At this point, there are two recommendations based on conversations with Michael Berry, who would be responsible for issuing the permit to proceed. Option A, RFQ, RFP for an electrical engineer to provide stamp drawings for licensed electrical contractors who then submit sealed bids or option B, RFQ, RFP for design build to provide adequate power for the outside HVAC units. In the interest of time, I would recommend option B as many larger electrical contractor firms have an in-house electrical engineer that will provide drawings prior to beginning the work. We can discuss further at the council meeting on March 2nd. Oh. Uh, You're asking to approve an engineer? To I'm asking that uh, there were two options on there was to do or do like an uh, RP for an electrical engineer to provide, either provide some, have someone provide stamp drawings that an electrical contractor can then bid out or combine the two together and have um, have an electrical engineer provide stamp, uh, I'm sorry, for a design build to provide adequate power for the outside HPC units. So first off, they would have to design the electrical system needed to be able to do the work 
And then once that's done and um, the plan's approved by the um, by RCI on there, that um, then uh, they would begin the, the rest of the work that's on there, which is actually doing, doing what they designed. So design first and getting that and then having people come in and bid on that design as a separate, two separate things on there, or combine them into one. So where we stand right now, the units are non-functional. The units are non-functional. No, 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 the, the, the heat works in the building. It's just the HVAC units out there are currently not connected to power. So as we get further and further into the summertime, uh, it's going to get hotter and hotter. And we're no not heat. There's no AC. So and that's your fault. What's that? Never mind. I I uh, I want to I want to make sure that we all understand that in December we were told that everything absolutely one hundred percent is complete and functional at not only town hall but also the police department. Uh, everything is one hundred percent complete and functional, and working properly. And and in February after the February council meeting we heard that the AC units actually aren't working and they're not functional and they're not hooked up. So I make a motion to do an RFQ for design build company to provide adequate power for the HVA to the air conditioning units outside. You make a motion. Is that option A or option B? You're going with option B. Yeah, it's the cheaper version of the two. Yeah. I, I, I feel as if it should be an R5. Let's, let's get some information first with potential pricing. So if you want to do an RFP, that's fine. RFQ, whatever. However, I would like information as to how this is going to work. And I would like information as to how much this is potentially going to cost. And then we can go from there. Um, also, I want to point out on page two, because we amended to do that CWG heated and air was the price for $79.9. It's stating in here that the council approved the heated and air for the price of eighty five eight twenty nine. dollars This is the memo that he wrote to us. So it's just his memo that he wrote to us. We don't really know what he said at a council meeting or didn't say. But if we approve these minutes, we're saying. This, this is what I'm approving. This is the memo that he wrote to the council. approved it. Memo. Approving the memo. But it's gone into the minutes. You got to read it so it only goes into the minutes. Yeah. So next, we'll, we'll approve it. Next. I mean, he read from the memo that he actually This is his statements. His statements. <clears throat> Ma'am. A question. Explain what, what did you say again on the uh, option B that you wanted. What was that again? An RFI. I would, I would like information, whether you do it through an RFI or RFQ, I would like information and potential pricing for next month so we can get this done because it's going to get hot. With a, I mean, that's essentially what we end up doing with, with, with B is we end up pricing. What you'll end up having is bids on an electrical engineering firm who can actually do the work itself. So you'll have a cost estimate on there. Uh, I make a motion to approve an RFQ for the design build to provide adequate power for the outside air continuum. That's what you have. That that's me. Okay. Motion made and second. Any questions? Any other questions? that contractors can come and evaluate and build a price towards. And then once they build a price, then that will essentially give the RFP as well. Request for qualification or request for prices. So RFQ can do both. And RFP is oh, so price. you're saying RFQ is RFQ for qualification, not for quote? Correct. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 
there. All right. Any other questions? All in favor? All opposed. Okay. Discussions and uh, from you, uh, back of hand, back of down, down in the table. I gave you a copy of the template that's on there, and the what I was just kind of looking for is if y'all got a chance to go through some of it. If there's, I'm just looking for it. It's basically it's the template. I didn't do anything to it, and I just want to kind of, I want to know what you want or don't want in the employee handbook, and then I'll make the corrections and bring it back for y'all to review or go to. We can have all this. We can do a work session, and we'll do a real work session off site somewhere. So what current handbook are we using? I can get a copy of it. Uh, it's, it's currently the Municipal Association's uh, guideline yeah. handbook. It's basically what you gave us. It's what we approved last time. So we should be currently using that same handbook. Yeah, August 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we should already be using this uh, Municipal Association handbook. Yeah. It's a little different than what is in there, but I can look at it and see it. I just remember a couple of years ago when we approved that, and we're using that. The difference is that I think it probably says a pack, kind of pack of energy, and, you know, different, different uh, employees, you know, maybe divisions and, and departments. And I think I had added or asked a couple of lines that was more inclusive of today's gender and. Yeah. Several samples from other communities that are out there. Well, if we if we approve uh, in 2020, it should be okay now. I mean, uh, uh, let's. Uh, I don't have one. I don't know. Uh, uh, I can get you a copy before you leave. But is that the one that we approved in 2020? The one you yes. This is the one that approved in 2020. Okay. Let's look that over and you'll get back with you on that. That's fine. Questions. One of the, well, one thing I do want to make sure we, we point out is um, there were two dates recommended for doing a uh, keep one spark for a beautiful uh, pack of the cleanup, uh, and based on what I sent out to council, um, April fifteenth was the preferred date on there, which I've already sent out to uh, keep one spark for a beautiful. If you are okay with that, uh, we can go ahead and start promoting that. They're going to send. They're going to mock up, mock up some flyers. Um, I mentioned the idea of possibly doing like a grill out. I know, or I think the, um, the fire department has a big grill, I think, her deck. And I don't know if there may be a possibility that the town and the uh, fire department can partner on this and then maybe have a bunch afterwards for all the volunteers who come out. Um, these are just some ideas uh, we'll to consider for that. Um, As I mentioned in the last meeting, uh, I'd like for y'all, I'm suggesting that the council section, uh, that we'll see. On the trash pickup, uh, I would like to suggest to council that the section regarding um, the lid needing to be closed be waived. Um, I've had a lot of complaints about that. We have a stack of comments and complaints about that, where we've got elderly people who 
a pizza box is keeping it from being closed and it's two inches closed and it doesn't get picked up. Um, so I'm recommending to council that that get changed on there. Um, Planning Commission still has a, a place open, so does Board of Zoning Appeals, and then the upcoming meetings that are um, on the agenda that are coming up. Oh, last but not least on here, the farmer's market. Uh, are you all interested in having the farmer's market come back uh, May through August? We're going to have another. Well, what I was, I'm suggesting is instead of putting up at the amphitheater, that you put it right down below in front of the museum. Uh, part of the reason that I, I had been told was people couldn't see or know that it was up at the amphitheater. So if it was put right here in front of the museum, everyone would see it as they're coming through the traffic zone. It was down here. Yeah. Yeah. It was down here? Yeah, it was, it was in front of the museum. Okay. Well, he wanted to move it from up there down here. Yeah. So it was always down here. Yeah, it was originally. Okay. We the construction. The construction made it up there. Okay. Is there a consensus from council? One one thing I want to do is at least have a committee to kind of look at it and kind of talk over how we do it and how it would be done. Um, one of the recommendations that at least I'd have on there is this, if it's done every single Saturday, typically you don't have as much crowd on there. That if you have it every other Saturday or maybe once a month or something like that, that you end up having a more sense of urgency to come out. But uh, if I can create some type of committee to be able to review that and look that over and make a recommendation to council on moving forward with that. If I have any problem with that. Good idea. Is there any questions on the report that I gave? No, I don't have anybody. Okay. Building code. Good evening, Council. Uh, for the month of February, uh, we're still feeling or we're thankful that the county has yielded um, performing those inspections and uh, giving them to us. Um, had to perform a few inspections. Uh, a lot of gas releases, power releases, I can say a lot. We have about three uh, gas releases, uh, two electrical, um, and then working on the addition on blend springs, uh, working with the contractor on that regards. Um, on the code enforcement, um, sent out a few violations there. Um, had a conversation with the uh, town attorney this past week. Um, I was telling uh, Joseph and Patrick, um, Wings kind of got clipped in regards to the um, inspection, not inspection, the due process requirements that uh, Mr. Frost um, believes, um, and, he, and he's correct in regards, but trying to track down these folks. Um, so one of the occupants or the homeowners that we found on one of the properties, um, difficulty in locating that individual. Um, so Mr. Frost would um, encourage to exhaust any additional efforts to try to find that individual. Um, whether that's reaching out to the county to issue a summons to try to locate them, whether that's looking through obituaries, whether that's trying to find next to kin through probate court, tracking down through the DMV, FOIA requests, et cetera. So um, he issued guidance to do a lot of extra, not extra work, but a lot of work in order to find these individuals to serve the summons uh, before just following with our ordinances that says 15 days and you receive a fine. Um, so there's a lot of work um, needed to track down all this information. Um, another occupant that we found, we just picked and choose, um, so to speak, randomly off the chart in regard to condemnations. Um, one of the gentlemen's uh, listed address of ownership in Moore, South Carolina. Uh, we pulled that tax record for that location, a different owner on that property. Uh, we then referenced, cross-referenced that address with another address, that owner is different. Um, then track down the deed of transfer, that was different. So for one occupant, we have four to five different addresses for the same registered owner in the Spartan County tax record. So it could be quite tedious in trying to find uh, the folks and serving them this piece of paper that says you need to conform, you need to uh, clean up your property. Um, Mr. Frost doesn't believe that just posting the property in a conspicuous location um, as the property maintenance code allows, but he believes in due process. And I agree with that. Um, just a lot. Some more effort needed and many more 
days before we can say we've exhausted the 15-day term or an appeal time or the 30-day appeal term. Um, just a lot more work is going to be needed in finding the, finding these occupants and the due process. Um, we also need to reach out to, um, I missed Miss Vicki today, uh, or Judge Vicki, um, at another town. She was in session. Uh, we need to speak with her in regards to what she anticipates for the common misdemeanor offenses such as high grass and off vehicles, trash and rubbish what her expectations are and uh, holding sessions and what she expects from us. Um, we definitely don't want to waste our time. We want to make it um, valuable and um, useful and efficient, whether that's she wants to see, you know, potentially five to 10 cases at once or once a month, once a week, once every two months. Um, need to speak with her to see what her anticipation is because she's going to be key in us uh, cleaning and serving these summons. Yes, sir, that concludes staff report. Anybody have any questions? Thank you for your work. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. So I'm looking at the report. Could you tell me what the fees and the Ys said for the time? Oh, I'm sorry. The end Ys is in regards to um, complaints. There's a top header there that's going to say date, number, address, mm -hmm. type. So yes and no is in regards to complaints. So anything with the Y, I'll include that on the next meeting in the printout. Uh, but that's the complaints, where complaints were received versus a random uh, drive around. What, 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 what does N mean? The N means no complaint, meaning we will observe the house upon drive around, so to speak, or random inspections. The Y is actually an item of complaint. Somebody did complain. Yes, sir. And that's, I appreciate Ms. Uh, Ms. Wright's um, effort in regards to the uh, website of issuing a letter to me by email that states um, putting your name, putting the address, I have a complaint, what is it? It's an awkward car, trash, vehicle, rubbish, etc. When that email gets sent to me as a complaint, you can upload photos, etc. Um, so those are a way that complaints can be reported as well. So have you addressed the issue with the uh, owners? That's the work in progress of finding those. Um, so Mr. Frost believes um, that although, although the letter may be delivered, um, like is the, um, the second column from the end, it has varying dates starting at 1-3, 1-10, 2-12, 29, 12-30. Um, although that may be delivered, he's not confident in regards to who may have signed for it. So the letter could have come to uh, my house and son could have signed for it, not necessarily that Michael signed for it, so he's, he doesn't, he's not confident in regards to just because it's delivered, just because the code says that, it's not valuable or enough to proceed with a court hearing for a court case for that person. Uh, we need, you know, direct evidence to show that Michael received that letter or Mr. John received that letter that was summoned by the Spartanburg County officer that's out of our district, which a lot of these are. And the ones with the most recent dates of February that with nothing by it means they haven't been issued in. That's correct. This was as of 12 22 is when this report was pre presented. Um, so those, those letters have been mailed. So just as of 12 22, um, this is when the report was turned in. Could you just run across and get the header? Because I'm confused with all the Oh, yes, ma'am. The, um, the column on the left is going to be an open or closed column. Is that the first? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, no, ma'am. There's a column on the far left, because if you see at the bottom left, it says closed. Oh, okay, that so that first column is open, closed. Okay. Second column is a date. Okay. okay, so it's open, closed, and then the date that it was opened or closed? Yes, ma'am, or observed. Or observed. Okay. The next is just an identifier to give it a unique. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The address, uh, the item, that's going to be the type. So I've kind of expanded this to a code enforcement item or a, if you see near the bottom, a reno addition or mechanical electrical plumbing or reno. So it's, I would say code enforcement is a type. TYP. What's the MEP for? Uh, mechanical electrical plumbing. Is there a way maybe we can have a legend on the next clip? Yes, ma'am. That identifies the, okay. 
Okay. Uh, the next column, the Y and the N is yes or no as regards to complaints. Mm -hmm. okay. The next column over was the date of the letter or the, um, the date of the observation. So I retract that, Ms. Sexton. If you notice the column on the far left, it's the day is actually logged into this spreadsheet. The second column from the left, that's the day that's actually logged into the spreadsheet. The one that you said was observed date? Yes, ma'am. The day that was logged? Yes, ma'am. So when I open the Excel spreadsheet and put in this information. So it could have been observed before, but this is when you logged it. Correct. Okay. So, so then after the complaint, that's the date of observation. Yes, ma'am. And then you observe like, whatever it was you like. Correct. Okay, and then that the date column the next one. Oh, that's the date when the letter was mailed. <clears throat> the next column is going to be the date on the letter. The date of the letter was either delivered or vacant. Um, that information is pulled from the USPS when you track the certified letter. On the date of the letter when it was... So, for example, in the letter, I'm going to mail it at the post office on Monday, for example. But I'm going to give the applicant three or four days for the mail to get through. Because So, on the letter, it states you have within 15 days of the date of this letter. So, I think it's unfair if I mail the letter on Monday, they are going to miss three or four days. So, I front date the letter. Okay. 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 And then the next column? Uh, the last date column there is the date it was, uh, let's say, delivered or any information provided by the USPS service. And the last column there is any action associated, whether it's no action or call, um, made contact with the individual, et cetera. And they are given 15 days. Yes, ma'am, that is in our ordinance. Um, that's also in the International Property Maintenance Code. Um, but we've been counseled to um, extend that and before we make any additional actions or ramifications to verify that this letter was delivered to, for example, um, uh, to say 160 of Fuller Street. Um, although it, may, it does say it was signed and delivered, it's the third row from the top, which, and I haven't received any phone calls action from this property. We need to go and verify once again that this property and this property owner received due process. Okay. So it just says the date under date info was delivered means that it was received by someone. That's a yes ma'am. Okay. It might not have been me, it could have been my son, it could have been you, it could have been who knows. Yeah. They said correct. Um, I'll include the legend on next month and I'll include the headings. Okay. okay. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, first update calls for service over the last month. We had 47 calls for service, nothing unusual, typical stuff that we typically got. Um, we're running right along with our typical stats and that the breakdown of the type of call we have is exactly where I expected them to be. Uh, no anomalies. I have had several complaints on Brewster Street about some juveniles, kind of just some mischief. Several video clips have come to me and it's been some nice years trying to track those people down. I found some parties that of course claimed that they were not responsible, had a serious conversation with them and miraculously those issues have stopped. So maybe I've found the right people at this point, but um, there were quite a few complaints about it. Uh, we certified as a driving instructor the last couple of weeks ago, and Officer Hensley over the corner, dressed like a mortician, is um, our new police officer. This is our second week uh, having him on board. Uh, so if you haven't met him already, please get through and talk to him. And on staffing, uh, our 
efforts that we have made to make us a more attractive employer have been paying off. We're having classroom officers that are applying now. I have interviewed two this week, both of which are hiring for candidates that are both going through the hiring process as we speak. Um, one will be testing in the morning, one will be testing on Monday. Um, so fantastic and awesome. And they both specifically said that the changes that we made uh, to what we're going to do for police officers is why they have decided to apply now and why they have not applied before. So that's wonderful information to have. Uh, we also have two previous reserve officers that have worked with the, the town before that have come back um, that are wanting to get certified. Plus, I've got some great leads for some new reserve officer candidates that we're going to be working with and moving forward and trying to fill those ranks. Um, we're starting to get the new commission vehicles up to Columbia. All of those have been stripped off. These equipment are prepped to go. It's just the matter of time of the two of us taking the vehicle up and driving the vehicle back. Um, so those are going to start disappearing very soon. I got trained from State Administrative Logistics Office on the Federal Government Surplus Property Program that will result in many acquisitions for the town. Um, I mean acquisitions, big, big dollar amount of generators and, and hopefully some barricades and some things that we really need. Um, <coughs> if we're willing to go pick those up for military bases, we're probably going to be able to get those very soon and, and absolutely free other than the effort and the time to go, to go pick those up. Um, so that'll start moving now. I'm currently in the process of grant writing for 23 federal and state public safety grant writing season. Uh, I'm trying to focus on grants for body armor. Um, these programs specifically want you to have fitted body armor fitted to each individual person so that person has to be measured like a tailor. Um, otherwise, it doesn't qualify for it. And um, we, we have a little liability if we aren't having fitted armor for each one of our officers going forward. So we're staffing the police department so we can have fitted armor. I'm looking at a potential network uh, for the police department to handle uh, our camera systems in the cars re require external storage, uh, potential evidence handling sol solutions and software, and a single vendor solution for body camera and vehicle cameras that will put all of that data in the cloud as opposed to actually having to physically touch it, bring it in the building, and put it on a hard drive and store it ourselves. Um, that is a very valuable resource and would also be um, much safer for the officers in general and for reliability for the town. Um, so those are projects I have going right now. Any kind of questions I can answer for you? Questions, comments? Good job. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Presented um, this particular um, email. Well, let me just read this and then I'll get forward. It says, I personally do not like the idea of discussing and or asking to make decisions regarding important town business through emails. Much of it needs to be discussed and recorded in our town meetings so it does not get lost. I know that some emails are okay uh, regarding certain issues or updates that the council would need to know on issues already discussed at town council meetings. But the majority needs to be discussed at meetings as they, be, as they need to be recorded in our meeting minutes to show transparency. Because we discuss a lot of stuff that's important that the town would need to know and would be in our meetings just go back and through emails. And they need to be discussed here. Now, I don't know how we got started with discussing through emails of what was going to happen at town meetings or what we need to discuss at town meetings or what are you going to talk about and what she's going to say because it's not pretty to everybody. Um, I also do not like getting emails that are only a end result of conversations that have taken place between council members with the administrator and or mayor. This leaves the council member, I'm speaking to myself, with implied conclusions that are not true. Uh, it's to me, it says a false pretense to me as a council member as to what has transpired behind the emails. I don't know. I don't know that something happened behind that. I just get an end result of, of, of something that I'm like, well, how in the heck did this happen? 
Um, to me, it causes mistrust and uh, towards other council members, the mayor and the administrator. And I would think that it might would cause mistrust with other council members. There was an email um, where a citizen emailed a council member and wanted to change uh, our order of agenda. Um, I asked it to be made transparent. It was not. Here is copies of that. We do not and should not take suggestions from a citizen as to how we might need to change or structure our agenda. Our agenda is set up as it should be and the structure should not change. Um, with this, me assuming um, that if we see the agenda as it is and then all of a sudden it changes to something else um, because the citizen asked. Okay. Um, so of course this uh, upset me because our agenda as far as Robert's rules is concerned after we set it up is to be permanent. It is to not change. Um, Mr. Administrator, in one of these emails where I had sent him, because I, and y'all saw that, you know, because I couldn't believe he changed the agenda because a citizen asked him to. And he said it doesn't matter to him how the agenda is laid out, and it should matter to him, it should matter to us as far as Robert's rules. It says that it should be after we have set it up. Uh, to create your agenda, you should first start by building an order of business, which obviously has been built, has been, has it been for as long as I've been a council member. It has been structured the way it is structured. This should be permanent outline of the flow of your meetings and the agenda for each meeting can be created once this is in place. So once we have our outline as how we want to structure our business, it is to remain permanent. It is not for a citizen to call in and suggest that we move a line item from one to the other. And it is important that we do have a structure in our agenda. And in this email you will see where the citizen asked a council member that he think it was it that it, that it was fine, that it was it was okay. Um, Administrator says, well, I need to, uh, in order for me to change, it has to be a two-thirds vote. Um, I was not called. A two-thirds vote is four people. He reached out to two. I don't know who those two people were who said that they didn't mind the agenda being changed. As before, two-thirds of seven is four. I, I wasn't included. So um, it, it was changed. So then after he is corrected by the, the council member, of, you know, what he's telling the citizen of what he needs to get in order for him to be able to change this agenda, he's corrected, which that should have stopped there. But this citizen was also included further, as you see in the email, regarding town business. It's not his business, this was Tam's business. So you, you can read that and read what I wrote that. So it is important how our agenda is structured. It is important that it stays at it is, and we do not accept suggestions and change our agenda from a citizen because it, all it does is sets a precedent for someone else to be able to call, oh, well, I gotta change, all you gotta do is call down there and ask them so and so they can change that. This is town council. Yes, we're here for our citizens, but our citizens do not run our meetings. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Um, yep. Another uh, thing I have 
is uh, a rush to make decisions. Uh, I have also felt on some uh, items and issues that the administrator and some council members, for instance, have decided to, on issues that I felt required more thought and discussion than we had given it. And they wanted to say, you know, in two weeks I need to know this, or next month we need to get this done, or next month or whatever. We have never worked in that fashion. We have never rushed into making a decision. You know, we, we all work, we all can. We don't have days off that other people have off. It, it, you know, it might be two or three days before I can really look at something and maybe put some thought into it because I work all day long. I come home, I have other things that I have to tend to. So it's not things that can be rushed and looked at. And I have felt on a lot of items that we have been looking at, I have felt rushed to make a decision because it's like, well, if, if I don't do this, you know, they're gonna go up. And you know, it's like, it, well, I, well, well, if they do, they do. Because look where we are now in making some rush decisions. That's my thought on that. I, and, and just just to put that out there, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it takes us time to do it, because in taking our time, we get it done right. Not rushing into it and just raising our hand and not fully researching it, each and every one of us, not just one person or two people. We all need to research and not rely on someone else. And if we don't rely on someone else and we don't like what someone else tells us and get upset by that, then you, you, you need to take responsibility and, and research and make sure the decision you're making is the correct decision for you. I don't have to agree with you. Uh, we, we, we all should be, be responsible for looking into whatever it is that we're looking into to research the issues and, and make our own informative decision not based on what somebody else said but what we said. And if we don't do it, don't be mad and upset when someone else tries to educate you on that. Okay. And I also agree with you with the back and forth with the emails. It, it has gotten obsessive. It is. It's it is. a lot. I can't it, keep up with it. No, you can't. I have to print them out and read them and understand. And I'm like, this stuff needs to be handled in the meeting. This stuff does not need to be going back and forth. We never did that before. We never have done that before. And I don't know why we are even doing it now. Sure, some little update on this, little update on that. Fine, in between meetings. And I also don't like being excluded from emails. Right on. Me neither. So. Me neither. And there's a lot of that going on too. You know? Three sons, two sons. And we don't know to the last minute, well, how, well, where did this even come from? Well, it's already been discussed. They already been there. The plan already got going on. So, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. One more thing. Lastly, I just want to say, you know, enough is enough. I'm, I'm just tired of um, ordinances being broken, issues not being handled correctly, and we hear from the administrator, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Or I will really, I'll, I'll read the ordinances and, and try to do better in the future. I hear a lot of that. It's like the ordinance is broke. The issue is not handled correctly, and that's the excuse that we get. We have said amongst ourselves, he needs to be taught, we need to teach him, he does. We try to talk to him, we try to tell him. He was even told by um, uh, Gary Frost, our town administrator, Ned King, our town manager, council members, Trey Eubanks, um, Jeff Shacker of how he needs to conduct himself with his council, and he doesn't do it. I am sick and tired of it. I am. We would not be in the situation we are in right now if he would follow procedure and the recommendations that we ask of him. He works at the pleasure of the council. And anyone who has the experience um, that he has on his resume and his work in the many towns that he has should have already by now known our ordinances 
and studied our ordinances. That would have been the first thing he should do. On some of the ordinances he knows, other ordinances, oh, I, I didn't know that. You can't tell me you know one and not the other.
or not? Mm -hmm. What are we paying for the service? And is it worth it? If we have a different uh, method that's working better, then maybe we can get rid of that. Uh, it, it is actually quite a nuisance on the website. It pops up and it's really aggravating. So mobile wise, of course. But anyway, so I, I, I would like I would like you to figure that out whether that's something necessary or not. And if we're not going to use it for what it's worth, it's not going to really work out. And now we have a different a whole different method anyway, and it's probably going to work better. Why don't we pursue getting rid of it? Well, if to my understanding, that would be for code enforcement issues, is that. But there are other ways that we can get information out there. And people can also can text 24 7 if they are, say, looking for a particular item or a particular person, that there's automatic responses that uh, has information out there. I can give you a copy of everything that um, words people put in and what the responses are, so you can have an idea of what's kind of coming through. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so with what uh, Miss Sexton was talking about, uh, I can agree that uh, that there's a lot of uh, emails back and forth, and, and, and I think one of the things that everybody needs to understand is what's considered electronic forms and what's not considered electronic quorum. So the Municipal Association of South Carolina uh, basically gave a recommendation that says electronic quorum is when the majority of council members engage in communications through emails. So what would what would constitute that is uh, the administrator emails the entire council and then Tony and then the chief and then Michael Berry and this person and who knows who else, you know, 15 people in one email. And then we all did it and then we replied to that same email. When we all reply, when one of us replies to that thread, then that is what constitutes the core. Um, I actually sent him the link and asked him before to notify all councilmen that this is, in fact, what constitutes that, that electronic core. I would assume that nobody got that link or did not get it. I couldn't tell you. So I think it's necessary we talk about it now. Um, when you are getting an email from the administrator that, that nine other people are copied into, you must reply solely to the individual himself. Not to all. Not to all. Not reply all. If reply all, that's what constitutes a quorum. And as well, I'm, I'm going to ask you right now, and, and I hope that the rest of the council members can, can agree to this. I don't think it's necessary that whatever you send me, uh, our town clerk and our police chief and our attorney and maybe even Jeff Shacker gets a copy of everything that you say to us. Uh, I, I don't think that's necessary. Our town clerk doesn't need to hear that you amended the agenda. Our town clerk doesn't need to hear that I corrected you on, on what you said to the citizen. She needs to just do her job and she doesn't really want to do that. I'm not asking you to talk. I'm talking. This is my time. So what I'm asking is if, if the rest of the council can agree to that, that we, we limit who all is in our email threads. And, well, they should be just a small council because it's council whatever it is. Yeah, so and, and that's the issue. Is, something, not is, something that needs to be discussed. It's, it's, it's the whole... Uh, forum of the council is what's being demoralized yeah. by, by this whole process mm -hmm. is, is it's, 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 it's disenfranchising the, the, the fact that the council is what runs the whole show and our perceived town manager is is attempting to change that and our town administrator works for this council he should be doing as we ask and abiding by the state's laws and the FOIA laws and all these other things. Anytime one of us sends an email and we ask that the rest of the council members know, the way that this works is if I send him an email and everybody needs to understand, then he needs to forward it to everybody on the council. Not Tony and the chief and Michael Berry and whoever else. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Mr. Frost should not get an email. Because every time Mr. Frost gets an email, then that's potential billing that he can do. If he has to sit there and read every single email, we pay by the hour. Yes, there's a retainer, but that only covers a certain amount of money. Am I right, Tony? 
We want the contract to let them know what it covers. But he is charging two fifty a month. Yeah. yeah. Which pretty much that's just the retainer. Yeah. So um, I would like the emails to stop as well. And I think form and function should be that if I send a request, then I think that request should be sent to everybody as well. So that we all completely understand who's making the request and who's doing what. Um, communication between me and the administrator, you guys should all know about. Everybody should understand what, what I'm requesting and what I'm not requesting. And, and I've attempted to do that. My emails typically always say get a consensus from council members. Um, I have religiously said that the entire council is important and necessary. And I will never change that. It, it needs to be the entire council that weighs in on any decision. Um, As it was in what I said to Ram, that was passed. Sure. And it wasn't done. He called two council members, which they're again, I don't know who they were. They're incognito. I, I also want to talk about this purchasing policy thing that was uh, adopted tonight. Well, not adopted, but the first reading was approved. Um, I think I think that council members should evaluate their perspective on the, the ones that the ones that that approved this should evaluate their perspective on that. This is this is what our uh, the, the, the town administrator. Uh, brought to the council for his recommendation for approval. And, and I've heard already before from um, a, a, another council member that, that, that the, the administrator is, is allowed to recommend ordinances. And in fact, he's not. He's only allowed to recommend policy. Policy is uh, just that. It's policy. It's it's not a requirement. It's nothing more than not only the contract. It's not legislation. Our ordinances do not actually say that he can recommend ordinance uh, changes. They actually say the ordinance or his contract. The ordinance. Well, I don't have his contract. I don't have a copy of his contract. I couldn't imagine the contract saying that he's allowed to govern what he or he's allowed to uh, recommend ordinances that govern his ordinance. If it does, then I can think that, you know, I'm fine with that. But reading the ordinances it, it allows him to purpose it uh, on policy. Uh, but but to, to take a purchasing policy and approve it as a uh, potential ordinance, I think we should I think we should evaluate what we're looking at more so before we before we just take a, 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 a draw on this. And, and start voting on things that um, I, I look forward to the next month to see if this is going to roll through. And uh, I'm done. Okay. That's me. Okay. Okay. Motion to Motion to